Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological thriller film, At the End of the Tunnel. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man in a wheelchair named John talking to someone over the phone. John is a computer mechanic and he repairs computer parts. Then he browses the internet to treat his sick dog. After some time, he injects some poison into the cookie for his dog. After a while, John hears someone ringing the doorbell and opens the door. There he finds a beautiful young woman named Bella, standing in the rain holding her mute daughter named Betty. Bella asks John if this is the house that was put up for rent. John says yes and invites them in. Betty tries to pet John's dog, but it tries to bite her back. John asks them to stay away from the dog and tells them that it gets aggressive towards strangers. Then John shows Bella the way upstairs and asks her to take a look around the house. After looking around the house, Bella tells John that she's moving into the house the same day. Bella comes back with all her belongings and makes herself home. Bella introduces herself properly and says that she works in the club nearby as a stripper. Later that day, we get to see Bella searching for Betty in the backyard. There, Bella finds that all the plants have overgrown and even finds a small slide. Then she walks around the place and finds a crashed car. Later that night, Bella finds a suitcase above the cupboard and, and opens it. She finds many pictures of John being happy with his family. Bella even finds pictures of John before the accident. Bella finally finds out that John had been in an accident a few years back in which he lost his wife and child. The car crash had left him paralyzed from the waist down. The next night, Bella manages to take John upstairs and surprises him with a small birthday party. They both talk for some time, and Bella gives John a dance performance, which makes John's hormones pump up. Then for the next few days, John continues to think about Bella's moves. One day, John hears something odd coming out from the basement wall and goes towards it. He keeps his stethoscope on the wall and hears voices of men speaking. Since it's underground and unusual to hear someone speak from the other side of the wall, John sets up a microphone attached to a wall to record the sounds overnight. The next day, John plays the recording and hears men talk to each other about digging a tunnel and supporting beams and setting up lights. John begins to take notes from the recording and puts a small hole into the wall. Then he inserts a small camera to record everything happening on the other side. To his shock, he finds a tunnel which is set up like a workshop. Then John covers the camera from his side and continues with his work. Later, he goes upstairs and asks Bella to leave the house for a couple of days. Bella gets angry and asks him if he doesn't like her moves. John tells her that her moves are very good and that he will tell her the reason when she gets back. Bella asks him to change his mind about it and leaves for her room. The next morning, John finds Bella in the kitchen and tells her that he doesn't want her to go. Bella gets happy and even pours him some coffee. John leaves to the basement, telling Bella that he has something to show her. John opens up his computer and plays the recording from last night. In it, he finds a group of men planning something. John watches them for a while and he gets shocked after finding Bella walking into the scene. The leader of the gang pulls in Bella and they both start giving each other tongue massages. Then the leader asks Bella if John has heard anything and Bella assures him that he couldn't have heard anything. John watches in shock. Suddenly, Bella calls out for John and asks him if she can go down to the basement since John had told Bella that he was show her something. Bella asks him again, but John lies to her of saying that he wanted to show her some Daniel C.C. hormone movies on YouTube. Later that night, Betty walks downstairs and stares at John when he's sleeping. The next day, John tries talking with Betty, but gets ignored. A few moments later, he sees Betty whispering something to the dog. After a while, John gets back to the basement and continues to watch the camera feed. At the same time, he puts an audio receiver into the dog's collar to listen to what Betty whispers. While watching the camera feed, John sees the men using a blueprint to discuss their plans. Then another man named Biggie brings in a guy named Puppet and tells the leader that he sent the address of the bank to a woman. The leader gets angry and questions Puppet about the woman. Puppet tells him that it is a woman he's been seeing for a few days. The leader doesn't believe his bullshit and tells Biggie to tie Puppet to the table. The leader again threatens Puppet to tell him the truth, but the Puppet keeps saying that it is a woman. The leader gets pissed off and stabs a screwdriver into the Puppet's leg. Then Biggie covers Puppet's face with a cloth and suddenly the leader swings a pickaxe right into the Puppet's face. John gets terrified and decides to call the authorities. Later that night, John ties the collar on his dog while Bella chats with him. They both have a drink and Bella slowly begins to feel sloppy. Then she gets up from the couch and tries to go upstairs to her room. But John tells her that she can rest in his room, so Bella goes into his room and lies on the bed. Suddenly, John injects her with a sedative and even ties her up. Back in the underground basement, the leader gets notified about the two boxes that they shouldn't rob. Then the leader tells a woman named Dora that she has to replace Puppet and go into the tunnel. Dora reluctantly agrees. 
We get to know that John didn't call the authorities and that he had a plan on his own. Later, Bella wakes up and John shows her the video clip of the leader killing Puppet and tells her that the leader is a bad guy. Bella watches the video clip and realizes that John is telling the truth. Later that day, John is seen working in his basement. He digs a hole to fit himself into the thieves tunnel that goes right below his basement. Then he goes upstairs and massages Bella, hoping to get lucky. Then he tells her his plan, saying that he's going to steal a part of what they steal. Bella gets shocked and tells him that the leader will kill him. John ignores her and continues with his plan. John finally manages to dig into the tunnel and makes his way in. He switches on the tunnel light and closes the hole using the cover he made. Then he glues some soil on the cover to make it look the same. Then he breaks a tunnel light right below the hole he made. John slowly crawls further into the tunnel and finds a water pipe. Before he can get out, the thieves come back, so John hides in a corner. The leader and Biggie are the ones to come into the tunnel. The two thieves begin arguing about something and get out without noticing John in the corner. After they leave, John gets out and searches for Betty around the house. Then he notices his dog near the basement and the elevator is lowered. At once, John realizes what has happened and rushes into his basement. There he finds Betty wandering into the thieves' basement. Then to John's shock, he finds the thieves walking into the basement. Betty also hears them and hides. John anxiously watches the thieves as they enter and talk about the heist. An old man enters the basement and we find him to be the city's mayor. The mayor gives the leader a paper saying that these are the safes that they shouldn't touch. Then he tells them to complete the tunnel fast and leaves the basement. After some time, the thieves also leave the place. Betty uses the opportunity and goes back to John's basement. John finds Betty holding a watch and takes it. Later that day, John goes to Bella's room and finds her trying to get out. John stops her and tells her that Betty has been talking and shows Bella a few voice recordings, which he recorded by using the mic in the dog's collar. Then John tells her that Betty stopped talking right after the leader had come into Bella's life. Then John proceeds to show Bella the recording, in which Betty says that the leader had abused her when she was a young child. Bella starts crying uncontrollably after hearing this and gets pissed off at the leader. John calms her down and tells her that he will take revenge on him. Bella talks to the leader over the phone and tells him that everything is alright. The next day, the thieves complete the tunnel and plan to take a rest for a while before the heist. John goes back into the tunnel and crawls his way towards the bomb, which the thieves planted underneath the bank's floor. John carefully removes the bomb and plants it under the water pipe. Then he crawls back underneath the bank and breaks open the floor. John gets into the bank and opens the safe that the mayor had told them not to open. After opening the safe, John takes some money and puts it into his bag. Then he gets back into the tunnel, but to his shock, he finds the thieves have come back. John gets back into the bank, and the thieves detonate the bomb. Using the dust as cover, John crawls into his basement. Dora and two other thieves crawl into the bank and begin opening the safes. One of them marks the safes using the paper that the mayor had given them earlier. While marking, he finds the safe that John had opened. The water pipe in which John had planted the bomb cracks open and water starts slowly filling in. Thieves on both sides notice this and the leader and two other thieves leave the place, taking away the money with them. Dora crawls her way, trying to get to the basement, but the water starts filling up fast. John notices Dora and offers her help, but Dora tries to drag him into the tunnel. John pushes Dora back in and closes the hole on his side. Dora tries opening the cover and begs for help. John puts himself over the lid and waits for Dora to drown. The two thieves who had come along with Dora also drown in the vault. John tries to wake up Bella, but she suddenly hits him and gets on top of him. Bella tries to inject him with a sedative, but John hits her head and knocks her out. After some time, the police and the mayor arrive at John's house and begin investigating his flooded basement. John lies that he heard a bang, and then suddenly his basement started to flood. Before leaving, the mayor gives John his phone number and tells him to call him in case of an emergency. John stays by the window and looks outside at the emergency department handling the situation. Sometime later, the leader, Biggie, and another thief named Mr. Watch show up at John's door in disguise as police officers. This scares the shit out of John, but John decides to hold the shit because it would stink and make him suspicious. So John uses Bella's phone to send a message to the mayor, asking him to come back. Then the leader sends Biggie and Mr. Watch to take a look at the flooded basement while he interrogates John. The leader asks the whereabouts of Bella and Betty, but John tells him that they had left the previous day. But Betty slowly walks out of the room behind John, and the leader finds her. The leader then goes around the house and finds Bella lying on the bed. The leader goes back to the hall and calls out Biggie and Mr. Watch. John begins lying when asked about Bella's condition, saying that she took a pill and went to sleep. The leader gets angry hearing John's bullshit and pushes him down from the wheelchair. 
Then Biggie starts beating the shit out of John, trying to make him tell the truth. The leader gives John a final chance to tell the truth, but John decides to stick to his lies. Biggie begins torturing him by beating John in the face and making him bleed. Suddenly, Bella's phone begins to ring, and the leader picks it up. The mayor tells him that he's outside the door, and the leader quickly grabs him in. The mayor tells him that the police are on the way, and the leader asks Biggie to tie him up. The leader gets back torturing John and finally decides to kill him. John begins begging for his life and calls out Mr. Wachi's name, using the information from the recordings. The leader and Biggie get shocked, and they watch for the truth. But Mr. Wash gets confused, and says that he has never met the man before. The leader turns back to John, and asks him to tell the truth. John says that Mr. Watch used to come here every night by climbing over the terrace, and then he often paid hormone visits to Bella. During his stay, he had told John about the tunnel and the robbery. John continues to speak more sensitive information, and even the place that they were going to use as a hideout. Then John tells the leader to go to the cupboard and take out a watch. The leader recognizes it as Mr. Watchy's watch, and a gunfight suddenly ensues between them. Mr. Watch shoots Biggie in the ear, and the leader shoots Mr. Watch multiple times, killing him. The leader begins crying over Biggie, and Bella finally wakes up. She comes out from the room and shoots the leader in the head. The mayor escapes from the ties and begins removing the dead bodies from the house. Then he begins to blackmail John that he can screw up John's life, and ask him to give half the money he has taken. John in turn shows him the video recordings, and tells him that he can also do the same. The mayor gets shocked after seeing the footage, and proceeds to take the poison cookie jar that John had kept for his dog at the beginning of the movie. The mayor begins eating cookies from it, and blackmails John that he would kill Betty. Having no other choice, John hands over the money, and the mayor leaves the house, taking some more cookies along with him. On the way, the mayor gets dizzy, loses control of his car, and crashes onto another car on the street. Then he gets out, finding a dead body's hand hanging out, and his car catches on fire. Then the mayor dies, bleeding from his nose and mouth. The movie ends with John, Bella, and Betty living happily ever after, even without the money. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.